Okay, all that coming up. Now, have you on our budget this morning? All aboard for our coffee time trip around the dock with Britain's favourite bus driver, Reg Varney. And he's followed at 20 past 11 by our phone-in on 051 555 1000. In the week of Find a Family. Three and a half. Right, still to come, we've got our adoption phone in. Uh, Kevin Woodford putting a bun in his microwave and uh, Fred up the fourth bridge without a kilt. And it's late. No, it's on Aren't its way. Always? Not forgetting, of course, our coffee time guest, Reg Varney. He's next, so we'll see you in a couple of stops. Yeah, see you in a minute. Come on. Whoa, oh, hold up, so bus. Windy. Welcome back to the 77A, en route to the dock, and to Reg Marnie. Right. Star of On the Buses and a million other things that we've seen over the years. Listen, before we go say anything else, is it true, this rumour that we've heard, that On the Buses may be coming back? Oh, uh, well, it's not a rumour, it's true. Oh, oh it's uh, definitely yeah. coming back. Well, um, no, I'll clarify it first of all. We were going to, re or they were, at one time, going to repeat 36 of my old buses, but that didn't come to fruition, though I don't know what happened there, but... So, uh, my director and, uh, said, why don't we do some more? It's public opinion. And so we said, well, OK, we'll have a go. But I said, what we better do is to do a pilot first. Mm -hmm. The Decea, as in any case, has got to be updated because the buses is all changed now. That's you, right, yeah. You, so you've got the one man operator for a start, right. and women drive the buses and things, which uh, has given them. Uh, 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 well, it, well, they tell when they told me what the plot was, then I was all for it. You know, it's mm. the, the, the. And peers... what will you be doing in it? Will you be? Will well, you still be driving? Or what? Uh, no. What's <laughs> happened is, Mum, Mum has given me the house. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've mortgaged the house. Okay. And bought, <laughs> bought a second hand bus. Ah, right, yeah. I see. You see, so you're uh, running your own business. Your kids own? are about 21. See. Yeah. yeah. And what the, what the girl is the driver. Well, driver is a driver. Hmm. And the boy is a brilliant mechanic, but uh, he's a youngster, see? He soups up the bus and uh, he paints it all different colours and all that sort of thing, and he white wall tyres and <laughs> all that. Well, listen, I'll tell you what, let, let's, by the way, I must apologise for this noise. It's your car being stolen there, Rich. Yes. Is it? Someone's, yeah. someone's nicking your car, so you'll have to walk back home tonight. No, but someone's been broken into. <laughs> Probably our car. Probably our car. Ah! <laughs> yes, just carry on. No, we're going to have a look and have a little clip, um, or a clip, a clippy, I should say, of the old series. <laughs> Come on, we're late. Now, get on that bus with you out. Right, right. <laughs> Not in there. Come here. You're driving, remember? Oh, no, shit. I don't like it up in the front. I'm lonely up there. I want to get inside with you. Come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I think that was in the days before the breathalyzer, was it? <laughs> well, no, if you see the rest of that clip, it, it, it just come out. That's why we did ah, that. Oh, ah, clever. If clever. that's one where uh, I made my own beer, and uh, yeah. dead ignorant, I didn't know what it was, and I didn't. I thought it was just ordinary, and uh, I'd had a drop at home, and, and uh, but nothing much, you know. And uh, of course, when I get outside, and the, the air hits me, because I've made it so powerful. Kapow, yes. Oh, kapow! You see? I'll tell you what else is powerful: your uh, autobiography called The Little Clown, which is uh, out now, high back. And oh, nice to say so. Well, no, no, a plug is a plug. Um, <laughs> and never let it be said we don't give them on this morning. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no, but what's really interesting is, I mean, it, it reveals about your your background really a sort of a training in the business going around the clubs doing all the all, all the treading all the boards which most comics who perhaps make it onto a sitcom today have never had i mean it's uh, your background was something which wouldn't happen these days no it wouldn't no well when i it was act by accident i did do the first work in men's club but and and but bear in mind it, it more difficult for me i never had an agent I never mm. ever had an agent until I came out of the army. Mm. Mm. And so therefore, in my day, it was word of mouth. And when you were a kid and you're starting out, you, 
you get a job and, and the more jobs you get, the more experience you get, the more polished the little act becomes and the more it comes pop, you know, more polished it becomes, the more work you get. Mm. But you started, actually, you, I mean, you weren't acting or being funny at all. You were actually singing and dancing and playing. Yeah, playing, playing, playing the piano, that's right, yeah. And then the accordion. Uh, well, they all came together, really, when I was 14, 14 and a half, and my mother and, and, and dad, my mum and dad, and uh, with the aid of my uh, elder brother, I, I say, they bought me an 80 uh, bass accordion, and as I was the soloist at the church, I used to practice the smile of solos on the accordion, mm. because it was like an organ, and also I used to sing the popular numbers of the day for the family, and it was only my father's foreman, who was a, the secretary of a club, who heard me and gave me the opportunity, and I did, did uh, got together a little twenty-minute act, as it were, for his club, which was mm. the Plumstead Radical Club, and I got eight and sixpence. <sighs> and then, if I was good and got an encore, I got one and sixpence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Worth doing. You were actually uh, at one very early stage in your career. I think you were still in about seventeen, eighteen. You were known as uh, as the little Dubliner, I think, or the little man from Dublin. That was your title, and that went down OK when you're outside your own patch, but when you were playing to, to your own sort of home audiences in East London, I mean, they, they, oh they really took the rise, didn't they? Well, well, you see, this uh, band leader, General Alfini, was at the Carlton Essex Road, in, 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 and because I got this green blouse on Russian outfit, little my, my sister made me, he took one look at this and he just made this up. I found him yesterday singing in the streets of Ireland and <laughs> all this nonsense, and it went down well. And then we got to the next... Colton, which was in West Ham, where I lived. Everybody <laughs> knew me, you see. And he couldn't, under, he couldn't understand why, why it wasn't going down so well. This, this reference to The Little Clown, which is the title of your book and everything, I mean, quite apart from the fact that you were given by your father, was it, a, a little lucky charm? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it was... Uh, uh, I opened a book. That's exactly... These are, this is how I opened a book, and I, this was why I, I thought, how do I start the book? And so I started with the very first thing I can remember, and I say, as I got to the bottom of the stairs, Mum was coming along the passage with a letter in her hand, you know. I followed mm. her into the kitchen, and I stood at the kitchen, scrub kitchen table, looking up at her, and she put her thumb through the back, opened it up, and started mm. to read. And halfway through the, pa the, the letter, she stopped reading, tipped the envelope upside down, and into her hand dropped this little celluloid clown. Mm. And that was uh, a letter from my dad in the 1914-18 war, this was, when he was in Egypt. And he'd sent me this little celluloid yeah. clown. But you that. also were, I mean, the other references, you also were very small yourself. You developed, was it pneumonia when you were nine months old? That's right, yes. And, and it, yeah. it gave you dreadful problems and you didn't grow very big at all. No, I, I, no mum uh, realised I got to the age uh, five or so. No, it wasn't that, uh, because I got sent to the convalescent home because of this. Mm. that I hadn't grown an inch uh, at all. So they took me to Great Ormond Street Hospital and they diagnosed this from way back from when I was n nine months old, the, the strain of this double pneumonia, apparently. Mm. Uh, this is what I'm told uh, yeah. by my mum, uh, that twisted the valves of my heart. Mm. And so it wasn't pumping properly. And every time I ran about and got hot like other children did, I, instead of going red all over, I went all red and white blotches. Yes. Mm. And in fact, I think, you, I think you, you stayed at around four feet until you were in the army, and then you, you for some reason, you shot up to... to I, did. Now, I, did. Yes, yes, I did, yes, yes, I did, yes. It is very strange, that is. I actually started to grow a little... Uh, when I was about 16, I started, uh, but very, very slowly. Did it, bother you? did it bother you being a tits, really, you know, when you're in your well, teens? Yes, you get you get sat on a bit, didn't you? But I always got myself out of trouble with comedy, mm. Uh, mm. making them laugh or yes. something like that. Or, yeah. I, or because I played the piano and uh, think, but you still got taken advantage of mm. uh, when outside. Yeah, I bet. Well, I bet you never thought you'd have your own HGV licence driving a bus, because you'd do uh, it for real, don't you? That was you yes, driving it, yeah, yes, 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 that was yeah. me, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank you very much, Roger. It was lovely talking to you. We'll look all look forward to seeing the, uh, new, the series. new series Thank when it you, comes. Judy. Right. We've got uh, our phone in next with the Agony Aunt Denise Robertson on adoption. That's just after the break, and we'll see you in a minute.